What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Tesla and some news that came out this morning about an acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. Tesla had entered into a definitive merger agreement with this San Diego-based battery technology firm. Maxwell Technologies was acquiring them in an all-stock deal valued at $218 million for $475 a share, about a 50% premium to the closing price. So this news totally caught me by surprise. I mean, Tesla very rarely makes acquisitions. When they do, it's a big deal and this specifically you know acquisition of a battery technology company could have huge implications and so my initial research found that this this could have very significant implications for the long-term roadmap of tesla's battery technology and what they have going on there so i wanted to break all of this down with you and give you a couple theories of what i think is going on and why tesla bought this company so but 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 first a little setback you know tesla is famously a vertically integrated technology company they do almost everything in-house this is just a mantra the company has taken with it. I mean, they have the Gigafactory in Nevada where they build all their batteries. They even build their car seats in-house, which is very unusual. So Tesla is a very vertically integrated company. They don't like to outsource almost anything, especially deep technology things. And so for this reason, you know, they very, very rarely make acquisitions. And when they do, it's that it's because they want to acquire a very specialized technology that would, you know, be very expensive or take too long to develop themselves. It's the last acquisition they made was two years ago in 2017. They acquired a Minnesota-based company called Perbix which made some sort of manufacturing equipment. Um, the acquisition before that was a German engineering firm called Groman, which also made this, you know, uh, automated manufacturing equipment to help with their, you know, production lines and basically improve the manufacturing process um, at Tesla's Gigafactory and at Fremont. And so those have been the previous technology, uh, those have been the previous, you know, acquisitions and technologies that Tesla's made. So to see them now by the San Diego battery company out of the blue is, is fascinating and is a hint that there is a lot going on under the hood at Maxwell Technologies that could have huge, huge value because, I mean, Tesla doesn't buy something unless they really couldn't build it themselves. So Maxwell Technologies is this company that was trading at 40 bucks a share in the 90s. You know, now is just around three or four bucks a share. It's been around since the 60s. It's this legacy, you know, ultra capacitor company. What are they doing that's new and exciting? You know, what's the breakthrough here is, is really what I was looking for. And the first thing I would do whenever, you know, a company like Tesla or an investment you have acquires somebody is immediately go to the investor relations page of that company that was acquired. So that's what I did. Um, pulled up the invest the uh, investor slide deck that came out about a month ago in January at the Needham conference that Maxwell presented. And we have the overview of their entire business. So recently, Maxwell actually went a divestiture in December to become a pure play on three mega trends in the energy storage market, uh, the renewable power generation in the grid, and the electrification of combustion energy engine vehicles, as well as the rapid growth of battery electric vehicles. So they have essentially pivoted into a pure renewable battery company as of December when they divested one of their other subsidiaries. What I thought was so interesting in that divestiture press release, um, Dr. Franz Fink, the, the, the CEO of Maxwell, says this action was taken to put the necessary resources in place so Maxwell can better focus on and pursue the tremendous growth opportunities presented by the markets of auto, wind, rail, and grid service by our ultra capacitor technology, as well to properly support research and development efforts to advance our dry battery, dry battery electro DBE technology. This DBE thing is what's really important. It's becoming increasingly clear that our DBE technology holds significant advantages over currently available energy systems for electric vehicles and positions us for significant long-term value creation as a result. So now essentially what has happened is as of December, Maxwell has divested out of all of its businesses to become a purely ultra capacitor business with a focus on electric vehicles and behind that developing this battery, dry battery electrode technology. Um, and apparently before this, during my research, I figured out that I guess all battery electrodes before this or the status quo is wet battery electrodes. So their big breakthrough is the dry battery electrode technology, which has all these huge implications for manufacturing electric vehicles. So the slide here on their on their investor relations site says, okay, so the energy density we can get to, you know, uh, above 300 watt hours per kilogram demonstrated with a path to get to 500 watt hours per, uh, per kilogram. They can extend the battery life up to 2x. They can also do a 16x production capacity density increase, uh, 10 to 20% cost reduction. They can do no solvents, next gen materials, cobalt free, solid state. So it sounds like this dry battery electrode technology is a huge breakthrough and that enables vastly more efficient batteries that can be actually made for an even cheaper price. So way better performance, way cheaper price with this dry battery, battery electrode technology. I pulled up the, the, the Q3 2018 Maxwell conference call, which is the last public conference call they had for their quarterly earnings to see how they were phrasing this. And it sounds like they've been developing this dry battery electrode technology and it's 
it's been sort of a lab project for years, but recently they've been piloting it and experimenting it and validating it with huge partners. And that's why even on this slide, it says a high likelihood of strategic partnerships within six months. And if we take a step back, this fits among all the puzzle pieces of the exact pattern of Tesla buying a breakthrough technology. Because what is what have we heard JB and Elon talk about on so many conference calls? They're constantly analyzing the landscape, monitoring like 10s, 20, 30, 50 battery projects around the world to track breakthroughs and potentially acquire them immediately when they are validated. And so my guess is Tesla was an early customer and trial, uh, you know, sort of tester of this dry battery electro technology validated that it worked and that it could be such a game changer that they could integrate it into their own battery pack technology that they just bought Maxwell outright. And if you if you believe that theory, um, uh, then I mean, there's so much going on under the hood here because if they bought them for 218 million, so that means the value of this technology to Tesla is worth a lot more than 218 million. And I mean, Maxwell technology, if you look at their financials, they, they have like 100 million in revenue run rate, but they're losing a bunch of money. You know, they're losing like 10, 20, 30 million a year. It's a money losing business. They have, you know, customers all around the world. So my guess is Tesla doesn't want any of that. They bought Maxwell technology almost purely for this breakthrough of the dry battery, battery electrode. But there is, is another sort of interesting angle to this. And I'm way, way out of my depth on battery technology here. I'm just doing my best as a Tesla investor to put the pieces together. But if you're anyone who has battery expertise or tech knowledge about this, please leave it in the comments below and correct me because I'm just, anyway, I'm doing my best. So Maxwell Technology's main business is ultra capacitors. And ultra capacitors are very interesting because they've long been touted as a next generation technology for electric vehicles. And maybe they are getting ready for prime time because separately, Maxwell Technologies in May announced this big agreement with Geely, the manufacturer of, of Volvo, in a $100 million design win to include its ultra capacitor technology into five hybrids. Um, and so it looks like that was a validation of ultra capacitors being ready for electric vehicles. And the other interesting thing is Elon Musk famously was going to work on a PhD in ultra capacitor capacitors for electric vehicles at Stanford before dropping out to go found Zip2 and then PayPal and becoming an entrepreneur. So Elon Musk, that you have so many things swirling right now. So I also found this paper, um, which is sort of explaining the dry electrode coating technology that Maxwell's developed. And I'll just quickly read you the abstract because I think it has something interesting here. In this paper, we report a truly solventless dry battery electrode DBE coating technology developed by Maxwell Technologies that can be scalable for classic and advanced battery chemistry, unlike conventional slurry cast wet coated electrode. Maxwell's DBE offers significantly high loading and produces a thick electrode that allows for high high energy density cells without compromising physical properties and electrochemical performance. Maxwell's DBE exhibits better discharge capability than those of wet coated electrode. Maxwell's demonstrated scalability by producing robust self-supporting dry coated electron film in roll form with an excellent long-term electrochemical cycle performance. So this is basically describing how these dry uh, coated electrode uh, batteries are so much better performing. They have all these cool pictures. Um, I'm going to post the link to this in, in the description. They compare it to to the wet coated cathodes. Um, the other big thing here is the cycle performance. The number of cycles that the, the, the batteries can last is apparently much better as well with this dry cathode technology. Um, anyway, now you might be adding to like, what does this add up to? What is the big breakthrough here? How does this change, you know, Tesla's product lines? How do we get from science experiment to something that matters to consumers? So this tweet from Scott Weiner, who follows me on Twitter, it explains this, this uh, watt hour to kilogram uh, statistic that is in the slide. And I don't know if this is accurate at all. I'm just basing this on the tweet and based on other stuff that I've read that seems to imply this is about right. So please comment. He says, congrats to Tesla on their exciting acquisition of Maxwell. Dry battery has huge implications for improving storage density from 168 watt hours per kilogram, which I'm assuming he thinks is what Tesla's at today, to 300 to 500 uh, watt hours a kilogram, reducing manufacturing costs 10 to 20 percent and getting off of cobalt completely. So, and then he says, for reference, 500 watt hours per kilogram could give the Model 3 a 900 mile range. I'm sure they won't do that because that's nutty. They just put a smaller pack in a car for less cost per car and lower weight. Um, but maybe they'll offer a big pack boss option. So anyway, that, that just sums up a lot of technical jargon for if, if Scott Wainer's right, or, or he's even, you know, in the right direction with his analysis, this dry battery, um, uh, electrode technology, once it gets put into consumer cars means that we can have vastly more efficient battery pack and cell designs from Tesla, which means vastly longer range, potentially vastly faster charging, um, potentially vaster, you know, better cycles on the battery. So they last longer as well. I mean, this is a fundamental breakthrough that could mean, you know, we have 400, 500 mile EV 
EVs with much cheaper batteries that are much more longer lasting. I mean, this is the fundamental breakthrough that almost seems like it will make, you know, you know, Tesla's famous for wanting to make the electric vehicle with no compromises to the internal combustion engine. But right now there still are some compromises. I mean, the Model S maxed out and go 330 miles. Any other, you know, large luxury premium sedan could probably go 500 miles on a single tank. So this technology to get EVs to 500 miles at a cost you know, at a, at, a, at a cost that can be compelling for them to make a profit is a huge, huge deal. I'd love to get any insight from any people who understand the tech better than me because I'm trying to learn as much about this as I can. But my take on this is Tesla very rarely makes acquisitions. When they do, it's because they've done their homework. This is a real technological breakthrough that they could not develop in-house that is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. My guess is Tesla is going to acquire Maxwell, cut out almost all contracts with outside customers, strip the company of everything that's going on, besides the ultra capacitor technology and this dry battery um, electro technology. And then they're immediately going to start R&Ding on how to integrate these breakthroughs into Tesla's cars and energy storage products. Anyway, that wraps up this episode. Tesla's acquired Maxwell Technologies for 218 million stock deal. This could result in the next fundamental battery breakthrough for electric vehicle technologies. And now Tesla is the owner of this intellectual property. This is incredibly exciting stuff. Um, this makes me, you know, I, I, I always think Tesla is, is years ahead in terms of battery technology and this by acquiring Maxwell Technologies and potentially having sole access to this next dry battery um, electrode breakthrough could have huge implications on the cost and performance of Tesla's uh, products it, and it, I, I think this is really exciting stuff. So anyway, would love to know what you think in the comments below. This is HyperChange. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters and producers funding the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.